Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Verse 6. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Psalms chapter 34, verse 3. O oh, magnify Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh with me, and let us exalt his name together. First and foremost, we want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honor to our apostles and elders, great millstone, who still rule well. Peace and blessing to the elect of Israel. Shalom. And I wanted brothers. To give uh, all praises with me because of this information, man. It's so great, you know, and it's good to get brothers to participate because we exalt the Lord's name together. His name in the name of his son, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Okay, now getting right into it. Getting right into it, man. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11. In verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, the truth is proof. The truth is all the proof that we need that our power is only our power. And that we are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. This book is written of us. It's written about us. From Genesis to Revelation. That's all the proof or the evidence that we need. But the Lord does something. After you believe on the truth itself, which the truth is invisible. You can't see the truth. All right. You can't see the invisible power, the unseen power, Yahweh and his son, Yahweh Shai. But we believe on them and we believe on this truth. So after that, the Heavenly Father, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh gives you access to actual tangible information, actual tangible or physical evidence proving who we are according to the Bible. First Corinthians. 13 and verse 6 is speaking about charity. Charity is love. So charity rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. And that's what we do. So the Lord gives us things because we rejoice in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things. Hopeth all things, endureth all things. So you endure all things for the elect's sake, for the sake of the body of Yahweh Shah. But you believe all things. So since you believe all things that are written in the Holy Scriptures, the Lord shows you extra evidence. And I'll leave it at that. Now, getting right into it, man. Going right into it. Now, we're going to be reading about a Negro who wrote in Hebrew. A Negro that wrote in Hebrew and also curse of Hebrew that was written in the First Baptist Church in Savannah, Georgia. Okay? And these two things prove one thing. That we are the Israelites. 
Now we don't need this, but we can use it to our advantage. For we can do nothing against the truth before the truth. This contributes. This helps our cause. It doesn't benefit Esau. This information hurts Esau. That's why they want us off the internet and off the streets. Now, this was sent to me by the elder brother Kazakia from the GMS Louisiana Church. Him and the brother Yurah. Okay? And their brother Yurah does a lot of diligent research dealing with you know, so-called Negroes, West Indians, and Haitians being Hebrew Israelites. You know, so Shalom to the elder Kazakia and also the brother Yurah, you know, and also the rest of the, the uh, Louisiana church. Those brothers are diligent. Now, reading this document here, Negro who can write Hebrew, which the elder brother Monaghan from D.C., he went into this around 2017, you know, so, and I also uploaded that a while back. You know, I re-uploaded it. But see, this information is rich information. It's still like it's new. So I'm going to speak on it again. Okay. Like the brother spoke on it. Because the truth is uh, fresh. It's fresh. Now I'm on... A.E. Prevost.wordpress.com. Now it says 1897. Educated African Jewish man, which we're not Africans and we're not Jewish. Okay. Jewish means to be like or to be close to. Like saying brownish. It's not brown, but it's close. No, this is who we are. This is who we are. So really educated Israelite man is conceptually confusing to Americans because Esau does not want to accept the truth. But there's nothing you can do about it. All right. Now, this was put up about three years ago. But the information itself is very old. All right. Negro who can write Hebrew. And this is an anomaly. Look that word up. It's an anomaly to Esau. You know what? Let me get it for you. The word anomaly. Because the Lord said how Israel is a peculiar people, right? We're a peculiar people. The word anomaly. Anomaly. Now it says noun, plural anomalies. Deviation or departure from the normal or a common order, form or rule. Right? Because this information is against Edomite supremacy. Now it says one that is peculiar. We're a peculiar people, right? Irregular, abnormal, or difficult to classify. Like it said on this uh, article here, educated Israelite man is conceptually confusing to Americans because we're irregular. And this particular man, he was irregular. He was against the norm. All right. Because Esau, he wants us to be Americanized. He wants us to be a uh, conformist. You know, assimilated fully into his system. Not going uh, against the status quo, so to speak. All right. Difficult to classify. Right. That's Jake all day, man. And that's pretty much the point on this. All right. So. Let's go back to this article or this document rather, which is on his website. Negro who can write Hebrew because we're not Negroes, we're Israelites. He is deaf and dumb and comes from an African town. So 
he couldn't hear, he couldn't speak, he couldn't speak English, you know. And he comes from a uh, town, more than likely from uh, West Africa. And it says Hartford, Connecticut, September 19th in 1897. A young African Negro has been in this city for the last few days who claims to be a Hebrew, an Israelite. He is deaf and dumb and as black as the ace of spades. So dark skinned. Hey, what does it tell you in Jeremiah 14 and 2? Judah mourneth and the gates thereof language. They are black unto the ground. You look that word black up in the Hebrew is quadar, which means dark skinned. So the real tribe of Judah are predominantly dark skinned people. You know, now we have, you know, light skinned brothers and sisters, you know, but collectively, you know, we're different shades of brown. And even being light-skinned, that's a uh, light shade of brown, all right? But this particular man, he was very dark-skinned, all right? He carries a pad of paper with him and answers all questions by writing them in Hebrew. In Hebrew! And it says, in Loshin Kodesh, which is really Lasha 1 Kodesh. Lasha 1 Meaning tongue, Kodash meaning holy. So the holy tongue, the pure language, the ancient Hebrew. So we spoke it in West Africa. And those different dialects that the Israelites in West Africa speak today, they are all different forms of Hebrew. You know? That's all it is. And I'm going to go into that. So this is basically a uh, prelude or an introduction to me going into how the different West African languages today go back to the Hebrew and basically still are Hebrew, you know, just a more corrupted version of it, but it's still Hebrew. Okay. Now it says, what excites the most wonder is that he writes Loshin Kodesh, Lashawan Kodesh, very rapidly. Okay? So fluently, consistently. It is the language of the book of Moses, right? The Torah, the book of the law. Hathawarah. And is made a special study of spoken and written with ease only by the rabbis. And highly educated Hebrews. You know. So the actual ancient Hebrew. Itself. Not modern Hebrew. Not Yiddish. The Negro. The Israelite really. Was sent to one of the rabbis. Of Hartford. Who is perfectly satisfied. That he is a Hebrew. He says that he came from a large town in Africa where there is a tribe of about 20,000 black Hebrews, dark skinned Hebrews, who speak Loshin Kodesh, which is Lashawan Kodesh, and are quite prosperous. He also says that his father is a rabbi in that town and, and that he is why his father and that is why his father took the trouble to teach him to write these languages, which needed an extra amount of labor on account of his being deaf and dumb. So at least he could be able to write in the Hebrew. He says his people not only write Loshin Kodesh, Lashon Kodesh, but it's their speaking language as well. Their native tongue, their native language, because we are Hebrew Israelites. And this is a cut on you different guys that claim to be Israelites that say that we don't have the real Hebrew or we don't know the Hebrew. But this particular man right here that was from a town, more than likely that was in West Africa, he spoke the ancient Hebrew. He spoke the Lashon Kodash. So what are you talking about, man? 
When the, the uh, so-called Negro slaves got brought here to the Americas, guess what language they were speaking? The ancient Hebrew. Esau knows who he put in slavery, man. <coughs> they knew it. All right. And they beat our heritage out of us. But some of us still retained certain remnants of our culture. And this is proof right here. He left home a few years ago and has seen a good deal of the world. In each town, he hunts up the, the uh, Jewish section, the Israelite section, and there they give him clothes, food and money. Now, I'm not sure if he was going among the so-called Jews at that time. More than likely he was. And they're culture vultures. They stole our heritage, man. Pretending to be us and claiming we're not the real people, man. Got some damn nerve to call us the Gentiles. They the Gentiles, man. You know? And they're going to pay for stealing our identity. They're going to pay for that, man. With blood. The most high going to destroy them, man. And put the rest of them in captivity under us. When Yahweh Shah returns. Okay? But this is just plain out, flat out evidence, man. And then you can say that this particular uh, uh, section from a book, you can call it a, uh, a myth or it's a hoax. Esau, he controls the uh, information that comes out on the internet or that comes out in books, that comes out in newspapers. This information does not benefit Esau. So let's say it's a hoax. Why even let it go out? And why should you uh, care? Esau cares when this information comes out, man. They take down our channels when this information comes out. And it's a, a great blessing that our channels are still up. And that's really because of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Okay? The famine of the word hasn't come yet. And Esau, see, he's acting uh, very careful. You know? He's being very delicate when it comes to coming up against us. Because you know what? More people are going to be converted and persuaded that we have the truth. Because why are you coming against it so much? Hiring different guys to uh, contend with us, to confound us, is not going to work. But let me read the rest of this. All right. It says, what surprises him, he writes, is that no Hebrew knows of his countrymen in Africa. Now, he might be speaking about those so-called Jews calling themselves Hebrews. These Jewish people that were ish. You know, a suffix. These people faking to be us, man. So they claim that they don't know what a town that he comes from. All right. Or that they don't know about it. Esau knows exactly who we are, man. They don't, you know, want to know it. Because the truth hurts, man. And see, they've been lying to themselves for so long. They've been lying to the world. So at this point, they're, they're beginning to believe their own lies, man. And it's hard to accept the truth. But you know what? The truth is the truth. And that's what it is. All right. And now it says this was put up in the Houston Daily Post. So in the newspaper. And it was also in certain books. September 20th, 1897. It's always that old information that's so rich. I'd love to read a book about his experiences traveling the world. Would be nice if they at least mention his name and where in Africa he hails from. More than likely a particular region in West Africa or North Africa. Which we lived all over Africa, but see... We mainly got scattered to North and West Africa, but we do have brothers and sisters in East Africa, Central Africa, and also South Africa. But we mainly got scattered in, or uh, fled, rather. We mainly fled to the interiors of North and West Africa. Okay, now let me read some more. I had a reason recently to reference this post again, and I'll reiterate that it's definitely in my top five all time favorites. That I didn't even post myself. 
You got this little smiley face right there. Also, when is this book slash movie going to be made? I would love this as a book slash movie. Well, guess what? You see in the book and movie play out in real time by the real Israelites waking up right now worldwide. Okay. Starting with the Israelites waking up in America, but all over the earth as well. You know, brothers actually waking up in Africa as well. Brothers waking up in uh, Europe. You know, uh, Mexico, uh, Central America, South America, the islands, all right, the Caribbean islands, all over the world, man. Australia, you know, Russia, Germany, you name it, Holland. So the truth can't be denied, brothers in Canada. So, I mean, this is just it, man. And also that same information is on this website here, virginiachronicle.com. Library of Virginia. So this is a reputable site. This is not fake information, man. Wake the hell up. Wake the hell up, man. Now this is put up in a book. Jewish South, Volume 8, Number 14 and 15, October 1897. All right. Now it says page 7. Let me see if I can... Zoom in on this for you, Akim Wa Akiwat. Lord will, you can see it. So this is on the Jewish South, which Lord will, I'm going to be able to run through this. And Lord will, you can see it as well. Now, it says at the bottom here, the black, it says black, deaf, and dumb wonder. Hey, man, Esau going to pay for how you talk about us, man. Black death and dumb wonder. Once again, us being an anomaly, in particular this man right here. There has been in this city for the last few days a young African Negro, a young Israelite who claims to be a Hebrew. He, let me scroll up here. He is deaf and dumb and black. You see how Esau talk about us? Because you know what? These fake Jews, they hate us the most. They're the ones behind the eugenics movement. You know? Sterilizing our people. Giving them diseases. They're the ones behind Planned Parenthood. They're the ones behind the drugs in our community. And the guns. Amalek. The scripture said how Yahweh will have war with Amalek. From generation to generation. That's in the book of Exodus. And it's reiterated in uh, Deuteronomy. Roughly. These people hate our guts man. And, but they're the ones pretending to be us. Alright. The, and they're doing nothing different from what. The uh, Herods did. The Herodian dynasty. Those were Edomites. Okay. They claim to be Israelites. Pertaining to their uh, maternal uh, line. The line of their mother. Because their mothers were Israelites, but their fathers were Edomites. Edomites, you know. Their fathers were Edomites. But let me stick to the point. Let me read uh, the rest of this. Now it says, it says, he came here from New Haven, New Haven, Connecticut. And is trying to accumulate enough money to go back to Africa. Is he, or if he, is what he represents himself to be. And if what he claims is true, he is quite an interesting character. But he represents the rest of us. OK, because this is who we are. He carries a pad of paper with him and a pencil and answers all questions by writing them in Hebrew. And it says, though, Shin Kodesh, I'm just going to say Lashawan Kodesh when I see that. By writing them in Hebrew in Lashawan Kodesh, what incites the most wonder is that he writes Lashawan Kodesh very rapidly. But you know what? Basically, this is saying the same thing as what I just read, basically. All right. It's really saying the same thing, you know. Saying the exact same thing. 
you know, speaking about how he's from a, uh, a tribe in Africa, about 20,000 Hebrews are there. They're prosperous. You know, his father taught him. His father was a rabbi, you know, and he's homesick. He wants to get back home. All right. But he doesn't have enough money. You know, let me just read, read that part there. Now it says, let me read right here. He left home a few years ago and has seen a good deal of the world. In each town, he hunts up the Jewish section and there they give him clothes, food and money. He is now homesick and intends to go back to Africa as soon as he gets money enough. And it's something like, it's strange that you see us how we're actually supposed to be. You see us acting and behaving how we're supposed to be anyway. That's strange to the world because the world wants us to be niggas. The, want, the, uh, the world wants us to act a damn fool, man, and be an embarrassment and a laughing stock, not being who we are. So it's strange to uh, see that, you know? That's why people look at us so crazy when we're out there teaching on the corners, okay, all throughout the world. Or they see us out in public, how we behave. Or they see us, you know, doing these sit down videos, you know, and it's strange to the public. Let me read the rest of this. He showed some money which they had collected for him at New Haven. What surprises him, he writes, is that no Hebrew knows of his countrymen in Africa. And this is put up on the Hartford uh, Courant. Okay, so th this is uh, real. This is real information. So, you know, people pretend that they don't know who we are. They don't know that we had Israelite kingdoms in Africa. They don't know that originally we're all from the land of Israel. But the, you know what? The, uh, the world is starting to wake up. They're starting to realize... That's exactly the truth. That is the truth. Now I'm going to close out on this right here. Now a lot of you brothers and sisters know about this information. But I'm going to speak about it anyway. This is dealing with how there was a curse of Hebrew writing found in the First Baptist Church in Savannah, Georgia. Now I'm on digitalscholarship.com ccny.cuny.edu The City College of New York CCNY Libraries Okay Now on the title it says Slave Pew in the Balcony at First African Baptist Church Memorialization Memorialization of urban slavery in southern coastal cities. Subject, slavery memorials. Description, the original balcony pews at First African Baptist Church were built for and by slaves when the building was constructed in 1859. The writing on the ends of each pew are written in an African dialect known as cursive Hebrew. This project was funded by Bernard and Ann Spitzer Travel Fellowship for research projects involving travel abroad and incorporating the study of architecture, landscape architecture, or urbanism. Now notice when I read about how the so-called Negro wrote in Hebrew, but he was, you know, he was mute and he was deaf. All right, but that was in around 1897. This first African Baptist church that was built in Savannah, Georgia, was constructed in 1859. So those two dates are not too far apart. So this is the truth, okay? It's the truth. Now, really, I don't have to read the rest of that. Let's show an example of how these particular pews had Hebrew writing on them. 
okay, in Savannah, Georgia. Look at that right there. This is a slave pew. That's cursive Hebrew writing. Even if you can't understand it, you may want to call it, you know, a scribble. But that's cursive Hebrew. All right. And you got to remember, we were in West Africa a long time. So certain Hebrew characters, we, we may have altered them. We may have changed them, but it's still the Hebrew. Even though everything is not precise, it's not exact. This is truth. This is proof right here. The truth is proof. Okay. That's plain. This is project hbw.ku.edu. All right. That's the website. The project on the history of black writing. Really Israelite writing because we're not black. We're Israelites. Preserving and promoting Israelite writing since 1983. As you can see, I hate saying that word black. All right. This is under uncategorized reflections on an NEH summer institute posted October 16th, 2013 by Will Cunningham. Now it says the history of Israelite writing has taken many twists and turns over the last few centuries. But never have I encountered a more complex, exciting, and perplexing example of it as I did last summer. A. Rejoicing not in iniquity, but rejoicing in the truth. So it, uh, it's a, uh, exciting. <laughs> it's exciting. Okay. The truth is exciting. As a 20th century scholar, I seldom encounter novelty forms of writing my academic interests rarely call me out of the library or office but to trace Israelite writing in America prior to the Civil War is often an exercise in futility especially within the context of enslaved Israelites while free Israelites certainly produced and published varying pieces of writing, the large majority of Israelites were enslaved in a system that largely prohibited literacy. And this shows you that uh, these same people that enslaved us here in the Americas are the Greeks. They go back to the Greeks because Esau... During the time of the uh, Greek period, when you read in the book of Maccabees, they forbid us from reading the book of the law. They didn't want us reading the law. Basically, they didn't want us reading the Bible. Same thing here in America. Esau didn't want you reading the Bible. Unless he taught you the Bible. But if you were caught reading the Bible, you were either maimed, you know, tortured or put to death. It's the same people, man. So they wanted you to be illiterate. They didn't want you to read or write. Okay? Now let me jump down. Well, I tell you what, it gets more interesting. Let me keep reading. You know, I can run through it. Now it says, But ever so often, scholars will stumble across, scholars will, will stumble across examples of literacy that date back to this period and they are often surprising I spent two weeks this summer in Savannah, Georgia at the Georgia Historical Society for a National Endowment for the Humanities Summer Institute while there we took a trip to the First African Baptist Church of Savannah this church's history dates back to the 1770s but has occupied the current building since 1859. The church has been masterfully preserved, including the original pews in the balcony. Check this out right here. It gets better. When we first walked up into the balcony, 
The first thing I noticed besides the change in temperature was that nearly every pew, 40 plus, contained various curious etchings on the side. The historian leading us through the church noted that while no one had attempted to translate the pews, he believed the carvings were written in West African Arabic. Now, if you know anything about Arabic, Arabic goes back to the Hebrew. If you didn't know. And it's written from right to left, like the Hebrew. The pews themselves predate the 1850 building. They were transported from the previous church building once the new building was acquired. While the language of origin is certainly speculative, he noted that others believed it as an example of cursive Hebrew. I was amazed that no one had even attempted to translate the carvings. Which, you know what, brothers that are waking up to the fact that we are the Hebrew Israelites and we'd, we'd uh, give that a, uh, a test, you know. We'd test that out. All right? We'd experiment with that, you know. That's what we do. But basically, that's the point right there, man. I mean, man, <laughs> what need I more to read? Okay? What need I more to read? Another example. Well, this is on My Travel Notions, Georgia on my mind, in Savannah and Atlanta. Look at that. Look at that. Straight up. Straight up, man. Look at that. That looks like the uh, the Nah character on the very end. Then the Shah. Okay? And, and uh, some of these characters is hard to make out. But this is Curse of Hebrew. You see? Plain as day. Plain as day. So we are who we say we are. And Esau denies who he is, which is a damn Edomite. Okay? You Edomites are going down. And there's nothing you can do about it. Let me close out with this scripture here. One of my favorite scriptures when I go into this topic. You know? The elder Malcolm and me, we always bring the scripture out. And other brothers as well, not just us. But it's beautiful going into this information, man. This is beautiful right here. Psalms chapter 85. I'll begin in verse 10. Mercy and truth are met together. This is happening right now. The Lord is having mercy on us by giving us the truth. So mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. So all the information proving who we are, all the actual uh, spiritual evidence, as well as the physical evidence, which goes back to the spiritual, it's all resurfacing. It's all coming to light and righteousness shall look down from heaven hey, by way of the uh, satellites. This word being teached high power on the internet. Okay? Circulating the globe. All right? That line has gone throughout all the earth. And there are words to the end of the world. We in the end, brothers. You know? Amen. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honor to our apostles and elders, Great Millstone, who still rule well, being a great example. Unto all Israel, okay, if you can receive it, those are the leaders of our people, man. And you brothers waking up, you're leaders as well, you know. So keep pushing, man. We almost about this bitch called America, which is Babylon the Great. And for you brothers in other countries, you almost about this bitch too, man, because you're still a part of Esau's world system. We almost about this beast system, man. You know, so Shalom, Shalom, Akim, Wa Akiwaf, brothers and sisters. Okay, 
To the elect, I say, Shalom. And also, Baba Kusha, Baba Kusha, Baba Kusha, Yahweh Ba Hashim Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashim Rakakudash, Ababa Ba.